Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and today we're going to talk about some more iconic masters and speculate a little bit about another one of the main tribes that is going to be in the set, and that's Sphinxes. We're going to be looking at 20 Sphinx cards that could be reprinted in Iconic Masters. We did a video a few days back looking at Angels, and the Angel video was a lot easier to put together, to be honest with you, than the Sphinx video, and you're going to see that as we go through here today. I'm really curious, and I guess we're going to find out soon enough, considering they're going to be playing this Iconic Master set at Hascon in a couple weeks. <laughs> so we're going to find out soon enough, but I am curious to see how Wizards deals with the fact that there's not really a lot of high-ticket Sphinxes that exist in Magic's history when it comes to financial value anyway. So if you're making a Master Set with a $10 pack price tag, how do you wrestle with the fact that a lot of these Sphinxes, which are going to be one of your core tribes in the set, are really valued like under a dollar at this point? So maybe I'm forgetting something. Definitely let me know in the comments below if there's any Sphinxes you can think of we don't talk about today. But I'm going to go through some of the ones I thought of that we could see included there. Now, quickly before we get started, if you check out the description below, you'll find a couple ways to support us. You saw the tag at the beginning of the video. We do have a promo code from Flipside Gaming. You'll find their website attached in the description. You'll also find some links to Amazon products. If you make any purchases via the links, a small percentage will help us. And finally, you'll find Patreon as well. With that being said, let's get into these cards. We're gonna start off pretty old school here with Petra Sphinx, 30 cents for the Chronicles version. This was actually originally a Legends card. But the Chronicles version is pretty cheap. This is not on the reserve list. This is the only card that doesn't have blue in the casting cost we're going to talk about today. So, I don't know, maybe it doesn't really stand a chance to make it into the set. But I just thought it was an old, unique card. I think this is the first Sphinx ever printed, if I'm not mistaken. And, I don't know, it would be cool for limited play, if nothing else. It was originally a rare, but I could see this getting the bust down to maybe uncommon and still being okay. I think that's a common theme you're going to see here. And probably how Wizards is going to mitigate this issue of the financial value. I think you'll see a lot of these things come in at lower rarities in the new set. Sphinx of Uton, 31 cents. This has been printed a number of times. This particular version here is the Commander 2014 version. I really like the card though, and I don't know if I could see this as an uncommon, honestly, maybe, but if the set's powerful enough. But this might have to stay at rare. It's basically a 5 6 flyer that gives you factor fiction when it enters the battlefield. Really sweet for limited play, so for that reason, I think it could see a printing here. Argent Sphinx, 35 cents for the Modern Masters 2015 version currently. The reason I picked this one is because of its interaction with the artifacts, which is a big theme when it comes to Sphinxes just generally. So I do feel if they're going to reprint a bunch of Sphinxes that the artifact theme is probably the direction they're going to go in with them. So this one probably stands a pretty good chance of showing up. Sarah Spanx from Planar Chaos at 38 cents. This is maybe one of my personal favorites on the list. I really like these Planar Chaos shifted cards. Of course, this is a take on Sarah Angel, which other than the fact that this is a Spanx and it's blue, is the same card. Uh, this could easily be busted down to uncommon and actually be a unique card in the set. And maybe it could get some new art. Like if you had a really good artist do the art on this, I think it could look really sweet. Sharding Sphinx at 41 cents. Again, a card that has seen a reprint in the past, but it plays really well with the artifact theme, so I do think there's a good chance that it shows up here. Chancellor of the Spires at 45 cents. Again, not a high value card, but this was a rare when it was first printed. It could stay at rare potentially, and it's got a nice body, 5-7 for what you're paying for it, high defense. But it also plays into a light mill strategy, which is a light strategy that you do see in some Sphinx-related cards. There's another one that's coming up on the list in a few moments. And beyond that, also the ability to cast a instant or sorcery, potentially, from an opponent's graveyard for free can be good, especially in, like, Commander and such. So I'm expecting some real high-ticket spells, like sorceries and instants, in this set to support this tribal theme. They're going to have to come up with some high-ticket cards for those mythics to sell these $10 packs. So expect at least a couple real big chase cards, like something like a Force of Will, anyway. So perhaps this is a card that could interact with a strong sorcery or instant card that could be at the mythic level. 
Sphinx Summoner. This was reprinted in Commander 2016, so not too long ago. 45 cents for that version. And this could easily be busted down to an uncommon, I think, and it might be pretty good working again with an artifact theme. Esperia the Inscrutable. 47 cents. This is from Dissension. It's never seen a reprint. It's an interesting card, so maybe it gets a reprint here finally. But again, financially, not a big card, and I don't really see this thing coming in as an uncommon. Sharoom the Hedgeman, uh, 66 cents for the Commander 2016 version, another card that's seen a few reprints over the years, but it's actually a good card. Now, could this be busted down to rare? Maybe. In a strong enough set, I think this could be a fine rare. I wouldn't want to see this in a master set, a mythic, definitely, but I think a rare would be okay, and it does have a good ability taking an artifact directly from the graveyard and putting it in the battlefield, so maybe with some good artifact creatures or just other strong artifacts, could be a sought-after card, definitely from a limited point of view, draft or sealed. Uh, beyond that, though, again, doesn't have a real high expected value. Hesperia Supreme Judge. 73 cents. This is the return to Ravnica version of Hesperia. And this was a mythic. Again, maybe this could go down to the rare level and be okay in this particular set. Wind Reader Spanx, 75 cents. Magic 2014 has never been reprinted, so again, maybe they'll just seek this one out so it gets another printing. Madame the Ageless, 91 cents for this one, and out of all the cards we're going to talk about today, I think this one probably stands the least chance of getting a reprint. It is a mythic, and the way Wizards looks at these, because it has the magic words on it, take an extra turn after this one, I don't think they're going to want to bust this down to rare, and I really don't think they're going to want to put a card under a dollar value as a mythic in a master set. So I don't really think this will show up, but it's an interesting card, I thought I would include it. Spanx of the Steel Wind, $1.14 for the Eternal Masters version of this card. This is another card that's seen a few reprints over the years. But the reason I think this will make it into the set is because I do feel there'll be a reanimation theme within the set. And this is a great reanimation target. It's kind of one of those classic reanimation targets, actually. So with all the high casting cost creatures that no doubt we'll see, considering the tribal element of Iconic Masters, yeah, I feel like reanimation will be a thing, and this will be a great target for it. This could be a rare if the set's powerful enough. However, we've seen from Eternal Masters that Wizards is not afraid to put this as a mythic in a master set. Arjun the Shifting Flame. Here's a card from Commander 2015 that has never been reprinted. Right now it's worth about $1.49, so we're starting to creep up there finally. <laughs> it's an interesting card. I think this actually could come in as a rare and be okay. Sphinx's Tutelage. Okay, so this one's not actually a Sphinx, but it is a cool card. It's already an uncommon. It would be a really nice and common inclusion, I think, at $1.54. And a lot of players just love this card. People brew with this and try to do some cool things with it, and it does play well with all the card draw Sphinxes that we've talked about on the list today, which, of course, is another sub-theme for these Sphinxes is drawing cards. So it totally makes sense, I think, for the limited game, as well as a card that, yeah, some players might actually want to grab another copy of. Sphinx Sovereign, $2.70 from Shards of Alara. A card like this does promote aggressive play, so they might include it just for that reason to move along the draft and sealed games. But in itself, again, I don't really want to see this as a mythic. This probably would be just fine as a rare. Magister Sphinx, $2.94 for this one. This is a great commander card, and this is already a rare, so I don't think there's any reason to upgrade it or anything like that, so it could be a good inclusion here. Sphinx's Revelation. Okay, another card that's not really Sphinx, but it's very Sphinx-related. Now, this was most recently printed in Modern Masters 2017. You can get that copy for $3.20. Not very expensive. We saw it as a mythic there, so again, they might pull the trigger and make a mythic in Iconic Masters, but I do think this card would actually be fine at rare as long as the set was strong enough. Now, with that being said, I've been trying to steer clear of newer cards, or cards that have been reprinted recently, I should say, like cards from Modern Masters 2017 or from any of the standard sets, for example. But, at least in this case, I feel like Sphinx's Revelation is just such a well-known card. It's kind of iconic, even though it's not super expensive, and it would be a nice way to just put a very recognizable card in the set. Sphinx Ambassador, $4.04. .04. This is from Magic 2010. It's never been reprinted. Again, this probably could come in as a rare and be just fine, and it would be a decent rare that actually could use a reprint, I think. 
All right, in the last card, we finally get into some sort of financial value that makes sense for an iconic set, like Iconic Masters, Consecrated Sphinx, $26.21. This was printed as a masterpiece not too long ago. As a matter of fact, we opened one of those on the channel, which was pretty sweet. Uh, but this is definitely, as far as power level-wise, the best Sphinx ever printed, and I'd be shocked if it doesn't show up in the set, considering it hasn't had a true reprinting, like in a regular set, so not counting the masterpiece, of course. And it's time like the card's great it's awesome for commander it's great in cubes this has seen modern play in its day even though that's kind of fallen off a lot as of recently but still phenomenal card this one could be a good mythic even if they just try to pick one tribal mythic from each of the five tribes they want to use like angels they could do angel of thune this one could be the sphinx representation and then maybe a lot of your other mythics potentially could be these big ticket spells like a force of will type spell or something like that and that might round out the value of the set so i am a little curious to see how wizards manages creating a master set around tribal themes and giving it the proper expected value for the price tag and like I said, we will know soon enough because this is actually going to see play soon at Hascon. So a couple weeks down the road, even though the set doesn't come out till the end of November, which is pretty interesting. But with that being said, those are the Sphinxes. Let me know in the comments below anything that you thought of that I didn't talk about today. There were a couple that I wanted to maybe add, but I wanted to keep it to 20. And again, there wasn't any big ticket ones that I felt like we missed or anything, but I could be maybe missing something. So definitely let me know. Until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.